Welcome to another episode of the Delicious Cooking Series. We've been on a meal prep series and I've been sharing with you some meal prep ideas that you can use for your weekday and weeknight meals. I always say that meal prepping is a big way to save yourself time, save yourself a lot of money and also control the type of food or the kind of food that goes into your body. And that's why I'm so big on preaching the gospel of meal prepping. Of course, it's also a great tool if you are on a healthy eating journey or about to embark on one. It's something that can sustainably and effectively help you maintain your healthy lifestyle. And that's why I thought it important to come and share some meal prep recipe ideas with you. I've shared some in the past and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you meal prep ideas for dinner recipes. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you three mouth-watering and delicious recipes that will span the course of seven weeknight meals. So that's three meals for seven nights. And in this meal prep session, I've been making a chakalaka sauce that I will serve with a sweet potato and pasta on different days. I'll show you what I do. I'm also going to be making a one pot chicken and vegetable rice recipe and then of course finally I'm going to be making a pepper soup with some yam and vegetable as well. All of these meals are very easy to make and they actually are also balanced diet meals as well. Kids will love it, adults will love it, everyone will love it. So enough talking, let's get right into the cooking action shall we? The first meal we'll be making in this dinner meal prep session is my own version of the famous South African recipe called chakalaka sauce. For this recipe, you'll be needing an array of vegetables, some onions, bell peppers, carrots, sweet corn, and some knoss seasoning cubes. You'd also be needing some chicken breast pieces, some fresh tomatoes and tomato paste, baked beans, some fresh pepper and garlic, curry powder, thyme, paprika powder, some salt to taste and of course some power oil pure vegetable oil. Move over to the stove top and then begin stir frying the chicken pieces in some hot oil that has been set on medium heat until they have lost all of their pinkness and they are slightly brown. Now once that is done, Add the onions and the garlic and pepper and stir fry for an extra one minute. Then add the chopped fresh tomatoes and the tomato paste and mix together to combine. My knoss seasoning cubes goes in next, followed by the spices, the curry powder, thyme, paprika powder, some cumin powder, and of course some salt to taste. Then mix together to combine. Leave this to fry on medium heat for about 5 to 6 minutes. While it is cooking, Start prepping the side dish you want to serve the sauce with. In our own case, we're going to be using some sweet potatoes and some pasta. So I'm just cutting up the sweet potatoes into smaller chunks. Then I'll transfer it into a pot with boiling water to cook. For the pasta, I'm using spaghetti and I'll place that into some boiling water that I've also salted heavily with some salt. I'll cover that up and allow to cook until it is nice and tender as well. At this time, the sauce should be well fried. Add some water or stock to loosen it up, then leave it to cook down for another five to six minutes. All of this will just help intensify the flavor of the sauce. 
Now when the chakalaka sauce is fully cooked down, add the baked beans and carrot strips along with the bell pepper strips and the sweet corn. Mix everything together to combine and then allow to cook for about two more minutes before taking the pan off the heat. When the sweet potato is soft, I'll also take that off the heat, strain out the water and set it off to the side. Now while the chakalaka sauce, the sweet potatoes and the pasta are cooling to the side, we'll get started with the second recipe for our dinner meal prep session. And this one is just a one pot chicken and vegetable rice. And for this, you'll be needing some vegetables. I'm using some bell peppers, carrots, sweet corn, onions, garlic and pepper, some washed rice, chicken breast pieces, some spices, tomato paste, knorr seasoning cubes, some salt, kale leaves, spring onions, and power or pure vegetable oil. Now start by heating up some of that power or pure vegetable oil in a pot, then grab the chicken pieces and add to the pot. Season with a little bit of salt, some knorr seasoning cubes, and then stir fry until the chicken pieces has lost all of its pinkness. Afterwards, Add the tomato paste and continue frying for another two minutes before adding the onions, garlic, fresh pepper, carrots, some spring onions, and then the diced bell peppers. Stir fry this for another one minute. Then add the washed rice, the curry powder, thyme, paprika powder, and cumin powder, some of the knorr seasoning cubes and some salt to taste. Mix everything together to combine. Now afterwards, pour in some water or stock enough to cook the rice through. Then tuck in some bay leaves to also help lend some of that bay leaves flavor into the rice. Cover the pot with some foil first to trap the steam before placing the lid of the pot right on top of the foil. With the rice I'm using, which is basmati rice, this should take about 25 minutes to fully cook. When it is fully cooked, take out the bay leaves, then use your spoon to mix the rice and the chicken and everything in the pot together. Finally, add some more of that spring onions just for a pop of color and then take it off the heat immediately. I also made a quick vegetable stir fry to serve with the rice by simply heating up some power or pure vegetable oil in a pan and then chopping up some of the leftover vegetables that I had which includes a mix of carrots, bell peppers, sweet corn and then the kale leaves from earlier. Um, you can pretty much use whatever vegetables that you have at this point okay. It's just to ensure that the rice has some vegetables in it. Transfer everything into the pan then season only with some knorr seasoning cubes and some salt. Stir fry for about two minutes before taking the pan off the heat immediately. Now we have two of the recipes all done. While they're just sitting to the side and cooling, we'll get started on the third recipe, which is chicken and yam pepper soup. And for this, you'll be needing some chicken thighs, yams, blended pepper, ground crayfish and pepper soup spice, some fresh pepper and garlic, knorr seasoning cubes, scent leaves and some salt to taste. Cut up the yams into small bite-sized pieces. Then place the washed yams in a pot on medium heat along with the chicken pieces. You can use any part of the chicken for this if you prefer but I'm using the chicken thighs which in my opinion is the most flavorful part of a chicken. Then grab the pepper mix. Now in this mix, I have some tatashe, also known as chili red bell peppers, and some onions as well. I blended the onions in this mix because I don't like to see the chunks of onions in my pepper soup. Now pour it into the pot, then add the chopped fresh pepper and the minced garlic, some knorr seasoning cubes, ground crayfish, the pepper soup spice, and then salt to taste. 
then add enough water to cover the surface and gently mix everything together to combine. Cover the pot and leave this to cook for about 20 minutes or until the yams and chicken pieces are tender. They should take about the same time to fully cook. Finally, add the scent leaves for a pop of color and that extra scent leaf flavor. Mix everything together to combine one final time, then take it off the heat immediately. Now all that's left is to prep the meal prep bowls and then assemble the meals into the bowls. According to my dinner table for this week, I'll have the pepper soup on Tuesday and Saturday, the chakalaka sauce with sweet potatoes on Monday and Friday, the chakalaka sauce with pasta on Wednesday, and then the one pot chicken and rice with veggies on Thursday and Sunday. But you can pretty much arrange this however you choose and however you desire. And of course, you can make as much of this as you need, depending on how many people you'll be serving in your family. This is seven days of weekly and weekend dinner all done. Portion the meals according to your seven size. And you saw how easy it was to put all of that together. It took me about an hour, 30 minutes. It's something, like I said, will definitely save you time, especially during the week, and you don't have to worry about making a meal for yourself or your family members as well. Just plan it correctly, prep it, and ensure that it is stored nicely in the fridge so it doesn't go bad. And then when it's time to eat, just bring it out, warm it on the stovetop or in the microwave, and you are good to go. Anyways, let me know if this meal prepping videos are videos that you like, and I'll bring more of it for you um, to see. So just let me know in the comment section down below, okay? That's all I have for you in today's video. I'll see you again with another another mouth-watering and delicious recipe. Until then, take care.